shit you can. Some uh, random life updates. Uh, <laughs> other way, the other day I went to all, my favorite all -you Korean barbecue place was the Cindy's. Uh, <laughs> try to keep the camera bag safe. Lumix G9 uh, in the Leica Lumix 12 mm f1.4 lens, 24 mm equipment. Did it good setup? Then. Uh, <laughs> Making beef intestine and it dropped the camera. I'm like, ah, oh, it's probably fine. And then it looks like it doesn't, the lens don't focus properly anymore. I don't know if I messed up the body or the lens, but, um, anyways, uh, shout out to my friend uh, Dave Chang and the Singapore crew for this uh, Lumix LX100, the, the first version. I'm using this to um, uh, blog and vlog. But, anyways, so, so first thoughts. What is the best car? <laughs> Debadged Prius. All right, just take it off with some sort of strong credit card. Gugan, super clean. Uh, I painted this matte white because this used to be black and it was peeling. Uh, <laughs> primer gray rims. You like my Kinsiguri thing, where I'm like, oh, maybe I should just paint this. Uh, gray like it typically is but uh, there was some rust and stuff so I first put primer the rust-oleum and then just the flat matte black so rather than hiding the the dings you kind of bring it to light problem with the older Priuses this paint keeps peeling I mean it looks like it's mostly primer so it doesn't really cons concern me with the that look it's it's peeling off here so that doesn't really bother me as long as it's in rust so as long as it shows primer, it's not a big deal. It's a wabi-sabi, wabi-sabi Prius. And then took out the emblems, shaved that off. Um, got some other plans. Did the headlight restoration kit from 3M's. Upon the hubcaps, took out the things. Prius, <laughs> am I the first, am I the first person to actually be like, proud of drawing a Prius? Maybe, anyways. Um, so some uh, entrepreneurial thoughts. Uh, Start Fight Club, bad reputation. Not flex, okay. So, um, some uh, some quick thoughts. Uh, first and foremost, um, this looks like, I think in life, uh, perhaps the best way to live life is 
choosing the more entrepreneurial path. When in doubt, choose the more entrepreneurial path. Uh, don't choose the obvious path. So even right now, we're still just kind of squatting in his mom's house and we're figuring out what to do next. We're going to move to LA. Um, Culver City, Palms looks uh, pretty enticing, but um, yeah, I think deciding where to live, how to live, da, da, da. I think tr treating it like an entrepreneur opportunity is actually interesting to me because it allows you to think outside the box and to not just live basic like other um, traditional modes of living, especially in America, we're all programmed to think the same way. I mean, I think the reason why I love the film uh, Fight Club so much is, you know, if you haven't watched it, watch it, or read the book, or do both, or rewatch it, or just read my blog post on just Google Eric Kim Philosophy of Fight Club, or just Eric Kim uh, Fight Club. It's funny, <laughs> even now what I do is, because I've written a lot and almost on every single subject, hello, um, so, if you're in doubt, just Google Air Kim, da 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 da, and you'll, you'll, you'll find it. Anyways, uh, shout out to Google. So, um, yeah, I think it's interesting because I think the reason why uh, America is so great is that it is probably the best place on the planet, I think, to do entrepreneurship. Um, it seems like now it's kind of like this, like, bridge between Asia and America. So for example, American innovation produced in China, design in California, right? Apple, uh, da, 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 da. or bring it all over uh, here, like Tesla, etc. cetera, um, or Vietnam, even Lululemon, they make all their products in uh, Vietnam now. I mean, even my personal prediction, this is where I think it's more useful to learn Vietnamese than Mandarin. I think slowly but surely, uh, because America is quite antagonistic towards the China. And who knows what the next election cycle comes. Is it going to be Trump? I don't know. Uh, but I think in the next decade, two decades, uh, America is going to become more distant with China. So even Apple is already experimenting making AirPods in uh, Vietnam. So my personal prediction, next 30 years, we're going to see a lot more uh, Apple production in Vietnam, not China. And also, it's better and easier to do international commerce with Vietnamese people because, um, I mean, you go to Vietnam, right? There's no great firewall. You could use Gmail, Facebook, all the traditional products, whereas going to China it's, uh, is much more difficult. Also, I mean, I don't know, but apparently people are saying the Wages in China is getting more expensive than Vietnam, so I guess the problems. Also, the thing with Vietnam, uh, so Vietnamese is in Quoc Ngu, which is the actually innovated by the Portuguese. I learned from Cindy, uh, Portuguese missionaries, which is a Romanized script, which looks like just the standard English alphabet, except there's like squiggly lines and accent marks. So actually, it's easier to text and do business with a Vietnamese person because you could just do it all in English technically. Um, and nowadays, with uh, Google Translate, everything becomes pretty easy. And also, Vietnamese people, especially the youth, are insanely good at English. Like you go to Saigon, they just speak, speak like the typical Asian American kid. Uh, and they all love uh, American media anyways. So yeah, I think uh, Vietnam and America is going to be the future. And also Korea, because let's assume that Korea, South Korea is like a pseudo neo-colony of America. Uh, Korea has a lot of business interests in Vietnam too. Um, they build their Samsung phones there and they're also a huge emerging market. Um, and yeah, I think the, the new big uh, market for America is going to be Vietnam. They, they sell so many iPhones there. Um, so, um, so entrepreneurship thoughts. Uh, I just think uh, when you have the option in life, you could just choose a standard path. Like, uh, so for example, the other went to a restore. It's kind of like a random secondhand store. Kind of like a Goodwill. Uh, I actually really like it. Shout out to the Habitat for Humanities. Uh, check it out. Um, I'm just like trolling around, just looking at some used furniture. And greatest, exciting, most biggest benefit of my life is uh, we're just walking with San. I'm just chilling with San. Thank you, thank you, San, because uh, he likes to do the touring around the store. 
I just thought this whole section just in a bin is just like like a shitload of 45 pound plates. Now I'm like counting it like very carefully. I'm like, wait, one, two, seven, one, two, three, four, six, seven. I'm like 14, 45 pound plate. And I look at the price at 50 cents a pound. I love it. This is the greatest deal steal of a century. Cause actually I've been toying with this idea with starting my own gym. Uh, looking for the the weights, but then it's funny because barbells squat racks stuff like that It's pretty easy to obtain in the States. You, know, you go rogue or uh, shout out to Texas power bars Best uh, bars on the planet. Don't get rogue. Rogue is for CrossFit <laughs> I mean honestly, it's like I have nothing against CrossFit. I just don't like the founder Greg Glassman and uh, Yeah, it seems like some sort of, like does this guy even work out and also this guy's like a misogynist anyways um, so always look at the founders and the genesis of things. That's why I don't trust CrossFit. But you know, for people who like to do it and stay fit and be part of community, I think it's, it's all good. But anyways, so um, I'll start my own EK Fit, EKFitness.com. Um, so. And also, yeah, but anyways, um, so, I was like, oh, what? And then, so we, we, anyways, we bought it and I already have the Texas, oh, Texas Power Bar, yeah, super, super lit, um, best investment I made in my life. So I'm just like, oh, maybe I should start my own gym, in public facing. And I think this is the thing for me, at least, is that, like, you could create your own private home gym, whatever's, um, but, like, creating something that's kind of public facing or, like, accessible by the public, whether free or paid or membership, whatever, it's actually kind of really interesting to me. So, for example, my passion of open source is, like, like I like the notion of open... Like, I, I just put myself in the other shoes. I'm like, when I was a kid, you know, like, 12-year-old, come on, I can't afford Photoshop, um, <laughs> right? And it's, like, early days of internet piracy, AOL, AOL 3.0. I thought I had a 56K mode. I actually had 38.8K mode. I remember I used to go to server rooms, chat rooms, server s-e-r-v-e-r -E -E or c-e-r-v-e-r -E -E and i would just like ask the bots to email me like one out of 60 roar files for like grand theft auto the og video games and stuff like that i remember like <laughs> trying to like download illegal cd keys for like counter-strike and diablo 2 um starcraft etc um because you know when you're a kid you, you don't got money right so yeah so i think uh, every intelligent kid <laughs> it's like, kid really wants to play video games, you know, ROMs, da -da -da -da, Pokemon, I've never owned a Game Boy, but I installed, uh, played all the ROMs and the emulators. Yeah, emulator is a good idea, I might innovate this idea more. But anyways, um, yeah, so actually not having access to money, capital, da -da -da, seems to be good. Um, also shout out to my friend Ryan from Backyard Brew in uh, Silicon Valley in Palo Alto. I think the minimum viable product MVP notion, actually that comes from him, I think... I don't even know who wrote a book on it. I think someone 